now to fight for number one, or in this case for number two as they go. Look at that, Elvis Rankin up the inside. He wants that before at Skip Barber Racing School seat, and he is going to do everything he can to get there as well. Here we go. And no name straight, but he's just defended well, but Rankin gets through, nips by. Six races down in the Skip Barber Formula I Racing Series, we head to America's version of the Green Hell. This is VIR, the Virginia International Raceway, a circuit which for the longest time didn't find itself in use, was brought back, restored to former glory, and now finds itself here with two rounds, which could absolutely swing the tide in not only a championship, which is as close as it could possibly be, but also a race for third place, which is the all important one race in the Skip Barber Racing Series. This is going to be two of the most hard fought races we're going to see all season long. I'm Jake Sperry, Chaz Draycott is alongside me for the ride. Chaz, we come into today knowing that Harley Horton and Diogo Pinto have been pushing each other to the absolute limit, but one of them is going to come away from here feeling like they have the upper hand into the season finale, final double header of the season. Absolutely, Jake. Yeah, this is going to be one of the real turning points of the season. We're getting into the later stages now. Only one more race meeting to go after this. So the drivers need to make sure they are pin sharp at this point of the season. But I think Virginia is going to be a big upset here, to be honest with you. It is so narrow, so twisty. There's not many overtaking opportunities. Drivers are really, really going to have to have their wits about them tonight, especially transitioning from some of the wider Grand Prix circuits that we've visited before. This is what they're racing for. Top prize being a full season in the 2023 Skip Barber Formula Race Series worth half a million dollars. Second prize is going to be half a season. Third place, one race in the season. All the top three will get five days of competition licensing and Skip Barber Racing School coaching. And do not forget the hard charges that go through. Now, this is how the standings look without drop rounds implied at this moment in time. It Three, uh, this is dropped, I do apologize. This is Harley Horton, who is in control. Three points clear of Diogo Pinto at this moment in time, with Josh Thompson in third. But if you look down the list of drivers who are there, who are putting those points together, I would say that that battle for third position overall, the top nine drivers here, Chaz, have a legitimate chance of putting themselves in the hat. Absolutely. It is ridiculously close. It's crazy. I absolutely love it, though. Consider how many points these drivers have got as well and how much of a percentage of those points that difference is. You're talking tiny amounts, really. Considering we've had six races so far, to be separated by so little is really, really cool. So I think that this, like I say, is going to be a real pivotal point. But this is the thing now, people are going to start to feel more time pressure, aren't they, Jake? Because we've not got long left to go in the season. If it goes wrong here, for some of them, it could be all over. And this is the sort of circuit where it could be all over. The Virginia International Raceway. Turn one, the horseshoe is going to be one of the key places to get it done. The other one is along that back stretch, Madison Avenue, towards the roller coaster corner, which is the right-hander. Yeah, just after the long straight. Those are going to be the two places to get it done. And of course, up at Oak Tree Corner, which is the most recognizable corner on this circuit. And it is worth noting that this will be one of the first times that the brand new version of the Virginia International Raceway is being run in competitive series out there, Chaz, which is going to mean that there are going to be a couple of small differences out there in terms of the way they're racing. Not massive differences, just small differences compared to what they're used to. And one of them is the removal of the oak tree. Yeah, absolutely. You know, drivers have visual cues. They have even just cues in terms of how the car feels around the circuit. You know, you and I have both done it before, Jake, where there'll be a slight bump on the way into a corner or something. When you know the car has settled after that bump, it could be a braking zone. It could be a point to really start winding the lock on, you know, when you feel safe to throw the car into a corner. iRacing puts the circuits onto the service in such amazing detail that if a bump has been smoothed out, if the circuit's been resurfaced a tiny bit and it just adds maybe more of a bump where there is a change in surface to how the track feels, then all you're going to feel is 
something that's completely alien to you, a part of the track that you didn't know was there before. So I think some people are going to be caught out tonight if they haven't put the time in yet. I love the uh, the colours on the left-hand side there, the timing screen, all in order as we look at the number one machine, Sebastian Weldon. Great to have him back up there. Of course, those numbers 1 to 20, Jake, are the order in which they qualified for this event. Exactly. Hot lap qualifiers were the aim of the game. Sebastian Weldon, just 13 years of age, the son of the late Dan Weldon, will be looking for a flying lap that works. And you must have noticed there over that last minute or so just how much tyre warming was going along that back stretch, how aggressively he was steering the wheel as he enters the horseshoe. Turn number one out on track. This is important now as you try and gear this lap because it's a corner that just opens up through as you get as much drive as possible. Over to the left-hand side, we'll look now with Jakub Maciejewski for the flying lap. The driver out of Poland in third position. This is a driver's eye view here, Chaz, of what you get to see when you're driving. And the one thing that I think has been really cool over the additions over the last few years of racing is what you see there as a driver's eye view. You see the halo device that is over the top and the drivers have to peer around as they focus on their lap. Yeah, absolutely. It really adds to the whole idea that these cars are so tight and so comfy, you know, really close cockpit racing machines. Having the halo go over the top of you and then be a very, very big distraction in the middle of your eyesight there is certainly an extra element to just the immersion of eye racing. But this is really, really hot stuff by Masiewski now. Look at how hard he's having to work one way, then the other around this circuit, through the snake, up towards where South Bend is at the top here, Jake. This is really focusing times, isn't it? Well, this is the most committed corner. This left-hander here, you spot your marker fly up over the crest and down the hill. You sense immediately afterwards the braking zone. And this is where balance the car's important into the oak tree corner. And look at that correction of oversteer off of the exit. And now you're on Madison Avenue. A chance to breathe when you're on a hot lap. And he gets that little nod to say, yep, yeah, I feel that I'm pretty confident with the way that lap's gone so far. But in the race, you're always trying to defend up over the rise and you get this small little dip. The track's going to bend slightly to the left-hand side and give an opportunity on the brakes to reach the roller coaster. And you start to feel it in the pit of your stomach as you go down the hill. Time's coming in. Michael Romanidis, the Greek driver, is currently the fastest driver. Matthew Zais has gone second fastest through the hog pen then. To finish the lap will go Maciejewski and we'll see what sort of lap this is going to be coming towards the line. We're looking for a time out there that's going to work for him. Harley Horton goes three tenths quicker than the rest of the field. And Maciejewski goes second fastest with that time, a 148.059. And the front row will be massive for him and the work that he's trying to do. Over the line, then the last driver, or one of the last drivers is Diogo Pinto. And look at that. Top two in the championship are one and two on top of the board, Chaz. Love that. Absolutely love that. You couldn't ask for more. We know this is going to be a title fight to remember, but the fact that they've put themselves on the front row alongside each other is awesome. But Harley Horton, considering how close they were all together there, there was literally 82 thousandths between the top three for a moment. He then goes three tenths quicker than them. That's a big morale boost for him and a massive kick in the teeth for the others. Harley Horton then, the championship leader, will be on pole position, but will have the Porsche Esports Super Cup champion alongside him for the ride in Diogo Pinto. Jakob Maciejewski, who we were on board with, lines up third with Michael Romanidis in fourth position. He has no drops left in his season. Matthew Zais and Sebastian Weldon will house row three of the grid, while seventh position will belong to Josh Thompson and Matt Busa will start from eighth place. Michael Janney will go from ninth with Pajema Schwab Lemonek, rounding out the top 10 in this field with Justin Adakanis in 11th position and Ross Banfield in 12th. Row seven will have Ara Leitinen in 13th position and Brandon Hawke in 14th with Simone Pessoni and Johannes Trout 15th and 16th. The last four drivers did not set a time in qualifying, so they'll all be sorted out by their I rating, meaning Matt Caruana will be ahead of Jordan Johnson, Jack Harrison, and Matt Adams, the fourth of the Matts here racing tonight. 
from this beautiful, beautiful track. What they will know here is that it is a hot track, Chaz, that they are dealing with. 101 degrees Fahrenheit here. It is just heading in terms of uh, British measurement, nearing 40 degrees out there, track temperature. So this is the sort of temperatures that you're looking at and you think, okay, it's slightly hotter. There's going to be a bit more understeer in these machines. And you are looking around thinking, well, okay, might be slightly easy to get tyres up to temperature over the opening first two laps. Yeah, but that's one thing you need to consider as a bit of a problem as well as a driver. You need to think, how are they going to last here? I mean, we've got only 160 horsepower going to the back wheels of these cars, but that's all they need. They don't weigh anything at all, 570 kilos. But having that power go to the rear wheels, we've seen a lot of drivers. They've got a great style about them where they always slide the car around, don't they? They completely drag the rear end around and really float it through the corner. That could actually come to kick them in the backside, though, throughout this race, Jake, because they could be scrubbing the tyres across laterally way too much, especially with a track temperature like that. So I'm worried to see for some of these guys that are used to doing that, how they're going to last towards the latter stages of the race. There is still one more race weekend after this one, and you want to try and get in on it because hard charger bonuses are going to be important. For more information on the schedule and how to become a member in the series, you can log on to skipbarber.com forward slash i racing series today and get yourself in on the racing action on top of that you can sign up and start your i racing career by heading over to iracing.com today we are nearing about two weeks away now from the week 13 build and a couple of brilliant additions that have already been floated around by i racing chaz and i think it's absolutely incredible that every time we get to a week 13 so every three months there's a brand new build that comes into the i racing service that we get an amazing new influx of what the future of racing is and those quiet additions to iRacing that make this platform absolutely sensational to drive. Yeah, there's always updates and there's always new cars and tracks coming and that's what we absolutely love. You know, we've been spoiled by iRacing over the last couple of years. Here is the format for this evening though. This is how it all stacks up. These wonderful iRacing Formula IR04 cars, one of the finest machines to drive in the service. Great for close racing, as these guys have shown us. And of course, with the setups being fixed, it's all down to the drivers. They only get one lap of qualifying, as you saw just a moment ago. And then you, of course, get our two races, 15 minutes each. But the result of this first race tonight sets the grid for race two. So even if you're not quite up there inside the top five on the podium, as long as you're in the top 10 or something, Jake, and in with a shout of being able to move forward in the second race, just go for whatever position you can, because that just helps your grid position for the next one. It certainly does. We take a look then behind from the iRacing sedan safety car along Madison Avenue and a beautiful, beautiful look at what these 20 will have to challenge. Look at the elevation change that this circuit brings. It's truly one of a kind here in Alton, Virginia, and it's got an old school feel to it. There is no runoff. It is purely grass. So if you are off the road, not only are you dealing with grass, which can be very, very slippery and very tough, especially with these slick tires to get back on, but a lot of the outside of the circuit here today, Chaz, is cambered away from the track, so it's doubly difficult to get back on. Well, Virginia International Raceway is in Alton, and it's very much like my beloved Alton Park in the UK as well. Very narrow, very undulating, and absolutely unforgiving. Proper old school circuit, how it should be, if you ask me, to be fair, Jake. Really good place to go racing this. And again, we're going to get a raw racing experience out of these drivers, these incredible cars, and this circuit is one hell of a stage for them to do battle on. Let's get underway. Harley Horton then is on the inside. It is Diogo Pinto on the outside. They will wait for the green flag to drop and they will get themselves underway for 15 minutes worth of racing action. They will hold as long as they possibly can. Diogo Pinto right up wheel to wheel looking to get that launch and looking to go. Green flag in the air and we get ourselves then underway for racing action. A little slow off the second row there for Jakub Maciejewski. It gives Michael Romaninis the chance and they almost interlock wheels as they head in towards turn number one. Driving around the outside will try one Mr. Diogo Pinto. He can't quite get there but they'll have to sort themselves out through turns two and three these left hands are important and forcing the issue now is Pinto to the inside little bit of runoff room on the outside but this left hook is going to be Pinto's but here comes the up and under at the right hook and he's straight into the back of it brilliant stuff between the top two 
There was a couple of cars around at the back of the field as well. R.O. Leighton and then Jack Harrison. I think Johannes Trouts just had a problem into the chicane as well after the left hook. But unfortunately, that means nothing to the guys at the front. They have to carry on with this epic battle they've got going on. Horton's got Masiewski and Romanidis behind him. Second, third and fourth from the qualifiers this week. All glued together within the top five. Then it's Matthew Zays, then Sebastian Weldon, Josh Thompson, Michael Janney. And then we have, of course, Yaroslav Lemonek and then Busa in 10th position. But look once again, it's like one fluid snake of a machine all the way around here. It's like a living organism of cars, isn't it, Jake? The way this whole field just moves so fluidly, it's beautiful to watch. It is, because they're all trying to follow in the slipstream, which is so powerful for fifth position. It's the move on. Matthew Zayt seeing Sebastian Weldon get himself into the right position. Here's the top four as they hit the brakes, then into the roller coaster for the first time. Use all the road then down the hill is Diogo Pinto, but it will compromise him here for the hog pen as he tries to take. Look how much Kirby takes trying to turn in. He wants to break, he wants to get away, he wants to gallop and bolt the pen, but he's not going to necessarily have that. And he moves over, he knows how to play the game, he wants to break as much as he can. Weldon did make that move to go through, but now for second. Suddenly, here comes Jakub Maciejewski moving to the inside of Harley Horton and he wants to play spoiler today and Pinto's off and round goes Maciejewski and into the lead goes Michael Romanidis. Oh my goodness. Romanidis was absolutely where he needed to be at the exact right moment. Harley Horton saw the two cars ahead of him locking up but as we both know, Jake, it's so easy for the car in front of you to make a mistake and you just follow them off the road. It's so easy to get complacent, see what the car ahead of you is doing and just copy them. And that's exactly what we saw there. There was a mistake from Pinto, which let's face it, we never see. Mazievski took a fantastic move down the inside, but as soon as he was panicking about locking up the brakes and Pinto went off, he then had a bit of a tap from behind as well from Horton, who's lost places in himself. He's even lost one place from that. So now it's Romanidis, Weldon, Zeiss, unbelievable. And Harley Horton, through all of this, though, is still in fourth position. It's important to talk about this because of drivers' drop rounds. They get two drop rounds in the series. Harley Horton's yes. best drop is a fourth-place result. So, effectively, he's not losing anything by being in this position right now. If drivers behind make moves, he'll just use his drop out there as he goes overall. So, that could be the trouble that they've got. Here is, though, a look at exactly how this all came about then. So, on the brakes, into turn one, the horseshoe. He's losing the back end anyway there. Trying yeah. to get that stop is Jakub Maciejewski, Chaz. And that's the issue that you've got. You've got to get it stopped at the horseshoe. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I don't think Horton could have done anything there, to be honest with you. He slowed down anyway, and that's why he still lost positions from that. But fantastic opportunism by Romanidis. Doesn't mean that he's out of the woods yet, though, because he's got Sebastian Weldon all over the back of him. And I mean, look at it. <laughs> still a massive train of cars for the top, what, 15, 16 places? It's fantastic. But yep, Weldon down the inside into turn one. Is he going to get it done? Is there going to be a carbon copy? No, nice and tidy from Sebastian Weldon. But what can we expect, Jake? We saw his greatness in the first round of the championship and a man that's so young in this championship, he's just such a promising star for the future in every single way, isn't he? Great stuff, that. Nice and tidy. Matthew Zay from St. Louis, Missouri is now looking to try and get himself into the mix. He's up in third position. This is the best position Matthew Zay's has run all season long and he is trying to stay with a very very fast top two but he will look behind him and know that Harley Horton is all over him at this stage but you're going up through this fast section the second part of the snake and you just realize that you don't really have room the south bend is so crucial for getting that drive getting that run through this corner and then you've got to try and set it up here at the double apex oak tree turns 11 and 12 and it's so easy just to concertina up and run into the back of someone there it's very similar to a track like most sport for example and that moss section of track it's that same sort of yeah. responsibility but speaking of responsibility right now top 15 are split by five seconds it's incredible everyone's got such a part to play here though they need to be so careful not to trip over each other it's really easy in cars like this that let's not forget don't have brake lights to just slightly outdo yourself run into the back of the car in front. I was going to comment on Harley Holton's damage on the nose of the car, obviously, that has come as a result of the contact with Masiewski, but I think he still had a little bit of that beforehand as well when we actually saw him going into turn one in the first place. So I think maybe that's how close him and Pinto were together earlier. We look back from race leader, though, Sebastian Weldon, 
Car 1P1 at the moment, but he's got everybody trying to pile in second place. Look at that, hugging the inside line as much as he dares. Romanidis doesn't want it yet. He doesn't want it, does he? But look, he can't oh, he wait too to long. Now. Yeah, he has to, and he does, and he throws it on the inside. He's sideways. Where's Zeiss in all of this? Matthew Zeiss is going to go through. Fantastic stuff. And this is the thing. If you don't defend, you have to attack. And that's yes. crucial. So that is why this pack is crucial. Matthew Zace takes the lead. Romanid is still in second. Weldon is now down to third. Thompson fourth. As Harley Horton just there had to deal with Michael Janney in sixth position. Who's now got Matt Carolina. Matt Carolina started 17th. He's now seventh <laughs> and almost making contact. But look at the race lead at this stage. This is an incredible train that's going through. And I'll tell you what, Sebastian Weldon, he may be 13 years old, but he doesn't want to wait around. He's not waiting for this, and we're only halfway through. This is where he needs to be careful, though, because we would expect from a younger driver to see that little bit of impatience from them and for him to send it absolutely everywhere. But right now, he's showing that he's got that racecraft. He knows not to push all of the time. Here's Josh Thompson. I still don't know how Josh sits so low to the ground in his sim, to be honest. He's been doing it for years, and... Well, it might have something to do with the fact he's about nine foot six, but still, he's really, really in with the fight now. And that's the thing, Josh is there in the championship, you know? He's right up there with the other guys. And while some of them are dropping down the order, I mean, Pinto's lead. down in 15th place. He could definitely be a charger. Is up for the lead. There is a battle. As now Romanidis gets it back from Zace, but can Zace then slip dream him into turn one? Let's see, Jake, only one way to find out, I guess. Well, he's lost almost half a second going through here. And Romanidis has just set off like a rocket mm. at this point. It's Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is known as the Greek Freak. Well, he's got a bit of company right now in Michael Romanidis. He's just flown away. Weldon understands that. He's now going to have to go for it. Covered on the inside there by Zayt, who knows that he doesn't want to have Weldon through. But on the outside, Weldon's going to try it here. Oh. And look at that. He's going to need some drive off the exit, though. But that's an incredible move to try and make that happen around the outside. It is a cavalcade of drivers at this stage. And now Josh Thompson decides, right, we've hit freight train mode. Gonna look to the inside and every which way you look, they're searching down the inside because not only did he make a move, Michael Janis just put one on Pajem as well. Lemon Air can, oh, there was a little bit there in the foreground then of those drivers being too wide through the snake, which is where last year they had trouble, Elvis Rankin and Mikel Garda. I've got no words for that move by Sebastian Weldon. <laughs> that was just glorious. So tidy, so picture perfect. I love it. Josh Thompson, though, yet again, gaining places by being opportunistic. You have to be in it to win it here, but it doesn't always mean that you have to be the one to send it. As you said before, Jake, if you're not defending, you have to attack. You have to at least be doing something one way or the other. You can't sit in the middle and get away with it here because if you're the driver in second place, for example, like we've seen before, like we saw at Road Atlanta with Pinto and Caruana, you can sit there all you like as long as you're defending from the people behind. You have to actively work one way or the other. You can't just sit there and expect the others not to want to come and have a pop from behind as well. So yeah, that's the situation that he's stuck in at the moment. But Weldon now in the lead ahead of Romanidis. This is excellent stuff by the 13-year-old. I can't believe what I'm seeing. But it was a gift by Michael Romanidis. He said, I'll let you have the race lead. Here you go then, Sebastian. We'll see what you can do with this. Because as I think Michael knows, and he would have known from round two of this championship yeah. over at Road Atlanta, Absolutely. he's trying the Diogo Pinto strategy. He wants to take this away at the last lap. Yeah, it seems, for anyone that doesn't quite know the racecraft at this point, it seems a bit daft to say, yeah, I'll get the lead up, don't you worry, I'll get it back later. And you'll think, how, how can they know that they're going to get it back later? But if the drivers know exactly what the situation is at this stage of the race, they will play it to perfection. These guys are so, so good. This right now is the train behind them, though, and this is Michael Janney on the back of Caruana. Car number six in front of him with the blue highlights. Then it's Harley Horton ahead of that. And Matthew Zace as well. Actually, apologies. No, I've gone even further back than that, haven't I? This is Banfield, is it? Banfield and Booster in front of him. Well, we're looking at the front, and uh, I believe you were in the right position Yeah, it there. was Janney, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so Michael Janney in the middle of all of this. Matt Caruana is your biggest mover in the field, by the way. He's the hard charger at plus 11 spots at this moment. <laughs> and Harley Horton Stop. currently off the drop at this stage. By comparison, Diogo Pinto's racing in 15th place, so he's using his drop. But it's a better drop right now for Diogo Pinto. Believe it or not, his drop right now is a third place finish. Wow. <laughs> well, again, that just shows you the consistency of the season and why he is right up there in the championship fight. We would expect nothing less from Diogo. 
But still, I think that they've got a lot to think about while this race is going on and he can't afford not to go for it as Thompson's going for it now on Romanidis. There's a bit of a battle here as well as Horton and Caruana together. Caruana around the outside of the roller coaster somehow holds on. Flipping egg. he's definitely pulled the safety bar down in front of him there and manages to stick on the circuit and he's not lost out massively. How? How on earth? Pass. He made the play. It was a pass in the grass of all things. He managed to get it sorted, and I, I think Matt Caruana will look around at Michael Janney and go, yeah, I'm, I'm still ahead. I'm still ahead. I'll take that. And all of a sudden, Harley Horton's dropping like a stone in this race into turn one at the horseshoe they go. And there is Pajemis Lemonek on the outside of Harley Horton. Horton's just looking around thinking, what is going on? I'm normally running away with these races. And now I'm having to really work my craft in what is the midfield. Shows you just how tough this race is. Lemonek's still there on the inside, but he's got the outside for his next corner. He's got to oh. put the power down to stop. Matt Booster getting into play and he manages it. So that sorts itself out. But Harley Horton, all of a sudden, finds himself miles back down now in seventh position. This was not part of the script. I think that damage on the front might be affecting him just that little bit, you know, just to take that slight edge off what it's doing. I don't know, though, because he got freight trained earlier on and he just hasn't been able to come back from it. You and I both know how hard it is to come back from something like that, though, Jake. Yeah. It's all about the rebound, isn't it? Now, let's have a look then at what happened. This is Caruana on the, in the bottom right of your screen going around Harley Horton. So he goes in, gives Harley all the room in the world. Oh, there is, I think, a little tap there. Bounces over the grass, manages to just keep hold of it. How that thing didn't sort of skip into the air over the curb, I don't know, but that was excellent. Well, he, he did so well to just cover that off. And look at this, it's starting to go again. Horton is definitely down in a straight line because now Pajem is well. Lemonet's going to go to the outside. There's a car off in front of them. That's Matt Caruana, who we saw go in the grass. He's now going to enjoy right in the midst of all of this. He just about avoids everyone, but he'll go way down the train behind Jordan Johnson at this stage. And get this, we're down to two laps to go here in this opening race of two here tonight. And right now, it's a top five who have a logistical shot of winning. Lemonet currently in sixth holding the second train and here comes a look then to the inside Josh Thompson makes the move on Michael Romanidis yeah important move that as well for Thompson because now he puts himself in the box seat after Sebastian Weldon he's going to push like mad over the remainder of this lap to get right up behind that number one car and get himself in a good spot for the slipstreaming down the back straight he may even wait until that final moment on the last lap though to get it done but before that, he has to hold off Romanidis because he wants that spot as well. So too does Matthew Zais. Michael Janney's going to be waiting in the wings as well. But we know what Weldon's pace is like on top of that. So many elements at play here, Jake. All coming to a fray in one final lap after this. This is going to be an excellent finale no matter what happens. Difference between Josh Thompson and Michael Janney right now in the race for third position in the championship is two points. This is massive for Josh Thompson if he wants to cement that third place. And with drops coming in, he starts to get through. Second pack now, starting to get antsy as they go through a big slide oh. there for Matt Busa and co. That was Brandon Hawkins who made that slide. And suddenly, you've got six all converging on each other. This could get very, very messy very quickly. They have all got to coordinate by the time they reach that beautiful section. The race on for the lead. Nothing's going to happen here into the hog, uh, into the roller coaster from the hog pen but they start to play the game they're starting to go single file there's a little bit of contact in the second group but they're okay for the moment and no they've got one lap left after this i'm intrigued here to see what josh thompson does you know i don't think he's going to go for this move but he's got to really have his wits about him to keep romani this behind yeah look he moves over to the left hand side slightly so he doesn't get a massive run but he also breaks the slipstream back to Romanidis. Keeps his car over to the left slightly. Oh, Tries to put his nose down the inside, then moves back across in the braking zone. Romanidis might not like that, but it's worked for Josh no matter what. He's managed to stay in second position. Now he's behind Weldon, who runs a little bit wide on the exit. There's a lot of mind games going on here from Weldon because he's putting the car in a position where he normally wouldn't. Maybe to defend, but I think he's got to consider that Josh wants the slipstream on the back straight. As here comes Janny. Yeah, Janney in fifth position is now going to try and go for it as well. And I think Sebastian Weldon's trying to hold him up through the slow corners yeah, to get as much right. drive as he can. I don't blame him. It's a good cutting tactic that he's using right now. But he's got Michael Romanidis still there. He's trying to get into the mix. Zayce and Janney have dropped off this group. 
So now it's about the top three, you feel, as they go through turns 8A and 8B. Now the southern, uh, this beautiful south bend, as they now flick on through the left. It's such a committed section. And up now at the oak tree, Sebastian Weldon's going to have to look in the mirrors and get an absolutely fantastic drive. Oh. He is sliding that through. Absolutely committed. But still, Josh Thompson holds on. Does he have the shot? at the roller coaster to make this happen. He's going to have to come from a long way back to win this one. Sebastian Weldon, I think, has done everything in his power to try and hold this off. Here comes Thompson moving to the outside. There's still about 200 metres yet before they hit the brakes. And now as they get there, can Thompson hold it around the outside? Oh. No, he can't. He's up in the air. Weldon's going to hold on, or is he? Robert Enos is now then going through and trying to find his way through. Just the hog pen left, and you had to get your elbows out Sebastian yes you did second victory in this brilliant skip bar the Formula I racing series what a jostle we've just seen incredible finish absolutely massive drama the contact will definitely be looked at but still well Josh Thompson had to go for it like you said Jake he had to throw everything at that I couldn't quite tell whether there was enough room down the inside left or whether Sebastian just ran wide. But at the end of the day, they were both going to push as hard as they can, leave it as close to the line as they could. And, well, we were treated to another absolute belter there. So many mind games going on. But Weldon takes his second victory of the season. What a star. That was racing incident in my eyes all day long. Sebastian Weldon wins by a tenth and three hundredths over Michael Romanidis, who finishes in second, Matthew Zais will end up in third overall. Following that is Michael Janney and Josh Thompson, fourth and fifth, crucially giving Michael Janney points to close up to third in the championship. But Gemma Schwab-Lemonek will finish sixth with Harley Horton seventh and your biggest mover in the field, Brandon Hawkin, plus six when all things were considered. Then it's Matt Busa and Justin Adakinis rounding out the top 10 then of this field. Diogo Pinto would be able to recover to 11th place with Matt Caruana in 12th. Then following that, it's Jordan Johnson, Jakob Maciejewski, Simone Pissoni, Matt Adams, Ross Banfield, Johannes Trout, Aro Leitinen, and Jack Harrison rounding out the 20 car field. We are going to step aside for just one moment though here with iRacing and your Skip Farmer Formula iRacing series. We've got the second race coming up, just three left here in this season. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Wow, one race here today and it threw absolutely everything at it. You couldn't ask for much better here from Virginia International Raceway. It has a habit of throwing up races like these and we've got one more to go. Jake Sperry, Chaz Draycott here bringing you all of the action and Chaz, that was a race which not only kicked off on lap two with Pinto and Maciejewski going off, but also that final lap, Josh Thompson wanted that, knew how important a race win would be and ultimately pays the price for it, trying to make it happen around the outside. It goes to show you the margins are so fine in sim racing. They really are, and it's something that we've discussed as well coming into this championship is the fact that these aren't touring cars or GT cars that can have a bit of door-to-door -door banging, but 
to be honest, they're open wheelers, so they do bounce off each other. We're going to take a look at this last lap, though, and try and pick it apart and see what we can do. Josh Thompson here weaving all over the back of Sebastian Weldon, try and make his way through. Of course, defending very well from Romanidis behind him at the same time. As Jake rightly pointed out, Weldon was definitely trying to back these guys up on some of the slower corners and park it on the apex just to see if he could get them to fight behind and take a little bit of the edge off. As they came through the left hook and then headed down towards the snake, it was Janney that was trying to make the move. But Thompson was now focusing and focusing harder and harder through turn 7, 8A, 8B, 9 and then 10, South Bend, to make sure that he set himself up for a good run down the back straight. You can see, though, that Romanidis was all over the back of him at all times. And the three of them were absolutely glued together. Josh was definitely eyeing up the slipstreaming opportunity. We all knew that that's where he wanted to get the job done. I thought he might have had a go down the start-finish straight just to try and unsettle the race leader at the time. But this is where it all came to a head. A little bit of weaving by Weldon, but not too much at all. Completely fine within the rules. Josh Thompson moves over to the left-hand side as they get up towards the roller coaster. And let's have another look at the exact moment where these two made contact. You can see that it's just such a fine margin, like Jake said. But wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact in cars like this does have quite the effect, to say the least. And eventually, Sebastian managed to hold on and take the win from Romanidis. One of those absolute belters of a race again, Jake. We've not had a bad race all season, to be fair. You could see frustration from Josh's side, which is completely understandable. But at the end of the day, it was just two drivers trying everything they could in what is a very difficult corner, even when you're driving it on your own. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't know how many times I've put this off in the sim and, and, and found that that corner is so difficult. But when you've got two trying to get in through that same piece of real estate, there's a reason why it's the key place on the circuit to get a pass done on the final lap. But as we've noticed quite a bit, you can make something happen at turn three, the NASCAR bend. Then you've got the left hook and the right hook heading towards the snake. That can very easily cost you a second's worth of time if you're too wide because you just can't put the power down quick enough, Chaz. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it, it's one of those parts of the circuit where you have to l try and line it up yourself and set people up for the following corner. You never go in straight away and sort of jump into it head first. But when you see this circuit from a distance on a map like this, it looks so simple. But when you throw in the undulation, it's an absolute, well, I was going to say roller coaster, funnily enough. Well, it just goes to show you. So this is how they'll stack up. The results of race two will be the grid for race one. So Sebastian Weldon, the fastest driver in the hot lap qualifiers, will have the pole position. Michael Romanidis will start from the front row with Matthew Zace and Michael Janney on row number two. Josh Thompson, who got relegated to fifth, will have to start from fifth for this one. And then it's Pajemajwab Lemonet starting off in sixth position. In seventh overall then, over on the fourth row, will be the championship leader, Harley Horton, having to use his fourth place finish drop round here for this one with Brandon Hawking along with him for the ride in eighth position. Matt Busa and Justin Adakinis will start ninth and tenth, and there'll be a lot of focus on number 18, Diogo Pinto. He's got to pull out all the stops here to get himself out and forward from 11th on forward. 12th there, we just saw Matt Caruana. Then it's Jordan Johnson and Jakob Maciejewski. We saw Maciejewski spin. That certainly didn't help him in his conquest for third overall in the championship with Simone Pisoni and Matt Adams on row eight. Row nine will house Ross Banfield and Johannes Trout getting caught out in the early stages. And then Ara Leitonen and Jack Harrison are 19th and 20th on the grid for this second race overall. They do know that this is an amazing five race, uh, thrilling, uh, I would say Shakespearean play of a series that they've got to go through, Chaz. And when you reach act four, like we have here, this is where the dramas really start to, you know, get in. This is where you start gearing up and saying, you know, we put everything in and the fireworks start. And this is something that you could jump in on. Try and be a hard charger in the final rounds of the championship and go, thank you very much. We've got a chance. You can head over to skipbarber.com forward slash iRacing series to make that happen. 
Yeah, like you say, Jake, this is the part of the show now, part of the play where characters start getting killed off towards the end, isn't it? So we're going to start losing people from that championship fight, and there's only going to be a couple left going into the final act where they can get all of the glory and either make it a happy ending for some, but of course make it an absolute nightmare for others. Who's it going to be happily ever after for, though? We'll have to wait and see. I'm very excited for a final round of the championship, but I'm certainly looking forward to just getting this one underway here. Virginia, it's not quite as hot as it was before, though. 94 degrees Fahrenheit now, Jake. Maybe it's a little bit hotter under the colours of the drivers, though, and that's where all the temperature's gone. Yep, seven degrees has dropped in sim time, by the way, has just ticked over towards 10 minutes past five in the evening. This track will only cool as this race goes on and these drivers will get quicker and quicker and quicker as they look through there is number one on the left of course who is the 13 year old sebastian weldon an absolute mastermind you could say a prodigy up and coming watch out for him in about five years time the other driver next to him number four michael romanidis he is the sort of driver Chaz, who has done just about everything when it comes to i racing he is a name held with such high regard he absolutely is, and this is the thing, actually. <laughs> in a series like this, he's been remarkably under the radar at certain points, which you really wouldn't expect from someone like Michael. But if I'm honest with you, there's been rounds where he's scored good points and rounds where he's not quite been on the, on the cusp as such, or at least it didn't seem like it. And then all of a sudden, he's just there. And now he's on the front row for this second race of the night with a very strong chance of taking a race victory. You saw how easily drivers can drop down outside of the top five then all of a sudden re-emerge again with just a little bit of opportunism and a little bit of slipstream this is just why we love this racing category these cars are so even as even as they can be on the fact that they're on a fixed setup but the racing they provide is so close and it's so hard to find those extra thousands so everybody here is at the top level of doing what this car can do either way though we're about to get it underway jake let's take it away the chips are down. Who is going to reach themselves an opportunity out of a turn to drive themselves to the river? This is important. And they know that after this, it is Road America that awaits them. Sebastian Weldon will hold the field and he will go on the drop of the green flag to get themselves underway. 15 more minutes, some all important points to decide. And by no means is this going to be plain sailing around this Virginia International Raceway. One driver is starting from the pits. The green flag gets itself underway. That will be Simone Pisoni, who's decided to start from pit lane. But ultimately, it's a nice, clean start. Well done, looking good. They're going to fan out three wide already from about the third row back. Josh Thompson trying to make a big move around the outside. There's troubles in the back. Then one of the blue machines then finds themselves turned around. Then that's going to be Yaka Matthewski and Matt Carroll who have both found themselves in trouble. Nightmare weekend uh, for both of them as they go through, or weekdays for both of them. But crucially, Weldon's got a gap, and it's Romanidis in second, and he's defending for everything he's got. It was actually Przemyslav Lemonek and Josh Thompson now racing for third. Thompson made a big power move off the start. Yeah, Thompson's actually now fifth as Lemonek has just poked back in front. He's having to go at Matthew Zace as well. But look at Weldon. Weldon's disappeared up the road. He's saying, you lot can carry on battling all you want. I'm just going to focus on what's ahead of me and crack on from there. Diogo Pinto's moved up to ninth position Ooh, already. Ooh, and one. oh, Adakonis. Adakonis. Yeah, he's off in the background and he's flying down the order and there's damage to the front of the car. And that's it. Race over in the blink of an eye, Jake at the fastest point on the circuit as well through the second part of the snake side by side tire to tire contact was the way that race ended and it is a real shame to see that when you're on the opening lap but here in third position Matthew Zace is going to have to look around him here sees Przemysław Lemonek then the Polish driver try and get through he is a really really rapid driver the results haven't shown it for Przemysław in this series just yet but he has definitely got the pace and I'd say he's got a temperament as well does Przemysław that says he wants to go through Matt Busa now dropping down the timing order so it looks like he's been caught out in some troubles as well the number seven in fact he's down in the pit so he's out as well dramas a lot of them on the first lap top two have got away yeah very attritional first lap actually which isn't like this series so far so hopefully those guys are all good and not too frustrated by what's gone on but the battles are all raging now at the front as thompson has found the gap down the inside of lemonek 
Lemonek tried to move on Zace. It hasn't worked out for him. And now Thompson's going to be all the way around the outside through NASCAR Bend. But now he's going to come under attack because look who's coming through. Harley Horton says thanks very much. He wants a piece of this as well. Thompson covers off the inside line again. Then Michael Gianni wants a bit through the left hook, through the right, down towards the snake. As ooh, It's all getting very, very friendly. There's more carnage in the background as cars swapping around all over the shop. Oh, it's a big one. It's a huge one. It's caught everybody out in this second group. And it was a spin right in front of the track. It looked like Jordan Johnson, Ross Banfield were the catalyst for it. So there was a big, big one that went through. Jack Harrison not happy over the radio either. Let's have a little look, though, at what happened on the opening lap. We've got to dissect everything at this moment. First and foremost, this is what happened to Adakinis out on circuit. Two wide through the S's section. Watch this. Tire to tire. Oh. Bam! And that is the heaviest hit you're going to have. That was surprisingly with Matt Busa. So Busa having that first hit found himself in trouble and that was how quickly it could all go wrong. It's still though on at the moment as we come back to pictures because here is Zayce and Lemonek then and you've got uh, Lemonek then on the inside which will turn to the outside. He's got the pass done then on Matthew Zayce and says thank Thank you very much. I will take myself up into third place. Well, Thompson backed out of that for a moment there, just on the way into the roller coaster because he saw that they were going to fight. And Horton really closely went in, well, nearly, I should say, went into the back of him there. I don't think he was expecting Thompson to back out that much because he wanted to try and take advantage like we've seen him do before. He wanted to use the opportunism. There's a car going slowly there, I think, just coming back out of the pits, actually, potentially. Uh, let's have a look back at the big incident we saw, though, just a lap ago through the left hook and right hook, Jake. Let's try and dissect this one, shall we? Now that's number 10. So this is Jordan Johnson and the number 19, which is Matt Adams. So, oh, a little bit of grass anyway. That opens it up for Matt Adams to try and go to the outside. And, oh, a big snap of oversteer. And then back into the circuit. The chain reaction goes through. And I, I haven't seen this at a road course in a long time, but the track was jammed. Yeah, exactly. There was... Just drivers all trying to avoid each other, not quite seeing who was around them. At the end of the day, it's just a human reaction to duck out of the way and just move away from whatever incident's happening in front of you. If another car is suddenly going a bit quicker than you around the side, unfortunately, that's not always on you, is it? But still, Lemonek and Thompson right together here. Weldon and Romanidis also together for the race lead. Can these two work together to get away? And can the two behind work together to move forward? Romanidis now right in the slipstream. He's in a great situation now, though, Jake, because he's got this chance to attack the race leader. He doesn't have to worry about the car right behind him. He doesn't have to worry about any compromise. He can just go for it. Thompson's got the same here because Zace is quite a far, a far away back as well. Well, here's the thing. Does Josh Thompson want to work together here with someone like Jemishwab Lemonek? He takes the move. He goes through and gets the pass. And if they start working together here, using the draft on each straight, then they're able to catch up to Sebastian Weldon and yeah. Michael Romanidis because Romanidis doesn't want the race lead. He wants to wait to the last lap once again. That's his MO. And the answer is, can you catch the leader, Sebastian Weldon? Yes, because in the words of Franz Ferdinand, he's dancing with Michael. <laughs> he absolutely is right now they are four tenths of a second apart as they cross the line it goes to two and a bit next time that it flashes through Romanidis hasn't gone for the move yet and now we look at Lemonek who hasn't used the slipstream to get back in front of Josh Thompson down there so he's going to be hoping that Josh can use the pace on the infield of the lap as such in the twistier bits certainly looks like they're carrying the pace quite well at the moment but we all know that camera angles can be very misleading things when you go to an external camera it'll look like a massive gap still oh, great to back. see the hard work that they're doing is around harley it's horton has gone it was horton and pinto it was the top two in the championship oh, no. who came together horton's lost two places so he's still going but diogo pinto i think is driving really really aggressively right now to try and get through we'll have to have a look at that at some point because there are big implications for those positions and even though right now they're racing about in ninth and seventh positions those points might matter for drops at the end of the season they might yeah that's the thing every single point matters in this championship and i've been told now we're going to have a look back at what happened from diogo so is that horton directly in front i believe it is isn't it then Janny ahead of that into right up behind him, down the inside. Oh, oh straightens him out as well. It wasn't too late from Pinto, but the door was open. It's a bit of a tough one to call, though, because it happens very quickly, doesn't it? And then just behind him now, lining up, was Brandon Hawkin. 
Yeah, I don't think he was fully alongside. That's the only thing you could say there is that, yes, yeah. there was a gap, but was he alongside is the question. Now it's starting to get busy for third on back because Lemonex had to start defending. He's got a gap now over Josh Thompson. It's now extended this league gap of the front duo to 1.6 seconds at this point. And here comes Michael Janney trying to make the pass then on Josh Thompson. He's going to have to make some work around the outside. We'll get a little bit of slipstream from Pajem Swab Lemonex, but they hit the breaking zone. And just like that... Janny's going to have to stay and stay patient in waiting in terms of trying to get this through. And I think Josh Thompson's trying to say, come on, we need some coordination here. He's trying to get that going and he's trying to get himself into position. I think Josh Thompson wants to win this race. He's not getting that because Michael Janney wants to hold his third place in the championship. He really does. And Lemonek wasn't making life easy for Josh either, to be honest. So he's definitely got the cards piling up against him right now. But this is why we love this championship. So many drivers at different points of their race, different points of their championship, completely different ideas on how they want to move forward in this race and the championship. And it all comes together within a couple of metres together on track at a very, very high speed. Well done to Romanidis. They're doing a great job at the moment, but I think Romanidis is in a fantastic position to take this race win here, Jake, because all he needs to do is sit here and wait for his last opportunity, which is going to be on this part of the circuit on the final lap. And Weldon's not going to be able to do anything to defend it, I don't think, if he's close enough, that is. Well, I tell you what, you uh, don't need to have a sheepskin coat to really, uh, I would say, predict what's going to happen between these two. They're going to wait for the final lap and mark my words about it. Rest in peace, John Motson, your legend forever. But now you've got yourself an opportunity here to get a lot happening right now. And this is third place outright here. Pajemba Joab Lemonet and uh, Josh Thompson. And it's third, fourth, fifth and sixth. But now they're going to have to be really alert here. They can't afford to back up too much. They do not want to let Harley Horton, Diogo Pinto and Brandon Hawking back in. This is what they're dealing with right now. Thompson right up underneath. Doesn't want to make oh. the move. And because he doesn't, hello, look at the inside. It's a Michael Janney who's just oh. going to go, thank you very much. And you'll be paid for waiting. And yeah, I'd have that reaction as well. I tried to <laughs> yeah. do everything and suddenly I've lost the place. Yeah, I think I know. I could tell you what he said, but it's not broadcastable. But at the same time, though, he had to try and push it. He didn't want to make the move, like you say, Jake. But it's that compromise. You don't want to make the move. You want to still sit behind the car in front and get an easy slipstreaming opportunity. The car behind you is going to say, well, I'll take that chance. Cheers, mate, and I'll go through. You can see he's definitely communicating with somebody there. I think some of these drivers do have spotters in the session. A spotter, basically someone that watches the race from an external view and tells them what's going on around them. You can see a little bit of damage on the nose of Josh Thompson's car as well there as he rubbed up behind Lemonek. But now he's really got to think about this because he's still got another car behind him. So he still has to think about that compromise. it has got Matthew Zace now on his back. Yeah, Josh Thompson will have Mike Spangler in his ear telling him everything he needs to know, whether to be aggressive, whether to be defensive. Michael Janney, of course, now is going to be looking at this and thinking, well, OK, I've got myself up into fourth position. I've got a really good chance now of making it third position here because this is going to be the move. Pajemis Rav Lemonek is just going to have to say, yeah, that's going to be yours. You've got it. You can have that any which way you want. And on the brakes they go. Thank you very much. Michael Janney now will take a turn, leading this quote-unquote peloton to try and catch the pacing duo up in front of Weldon and Romanidis. He's so cool, is Janney, isn't he? He looks like something out of a music video with his hair just gently waving in the wind. His facial expression doesn't change at all. He's got the cool surroundings behind him. There's just everything so cool and calm and collected about Janney's situation. Look at that. He's been bump drafted in a Formula 4 car, effectively. And he just, his facial expression doesn't change. He's just getting on with the job. It's just great. I love watching Michael race, especially when you've got the camera looking at him as well. It's just great. It really is. Apparently, there was nose damage from that there on the front of Lemonex car as well. It's now actually got a bit of a scratch on it. Oh, well, uh, the good news is going to be that uh, the numbers are going to change. Therefore, the paint will change by the time they reach Virginia. Uh, they reach Road America <laughs> Trying to, peel to finish it off. off the final round. So they'll be fine. It'll come out in the wash, I'm sure, at this point. But through the snake they go. That's what they're chasing down. Michael Romanidis, who has been as patient as a saint in this race, knowing that young Sebastian Weldon there, who is leading this race, looking for a double up at the front of this field, is being put pretty much through the ringer right now. This is a case of you miss one apex and I hit. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. He's all over him now and he's just 
filling his mirrors, doing what he needs to do, putting the pressure on. But, I mean, hats off to Sebastian Weldon, considering the pace that he's keeping up as well. He's managing to stay in front. You know, Romanidis isn't making his life as hard as he could do. He could sort of pretend to throw it down the inside. He could just show his nose into a few more corners. But Sebastian's clever enough to know at this point what's going on. He knows that Romanidis is going to sit there. And to be fair, we might even see Weldon try and back it up a little bit more like we did in the earlier race. But there's not enough of a sort of close group behind him to be able to risk that, I don't think. Because if he does try and slow it down too much, Romanidis will just dive past. And that'll be that. Two and a half minutes to go here, Jake. And to be honest, in a strange way, I'm edging towards the edge of my seat a little bit more here. But... Not quite with the insane sort of high-pitched tempo that we'd expect at this point of the race. This is just setting up for the final lap. You've got yeah. a two-car group at the front of the field. Then you've got the group of four, third through sixth. And then you've got seventh through ninth. All of whom, if everything goes sideways, has a chance to win this race. And it is that close. The top nine split by four and a half seconds at this moment. On the top of your screen, you've got the battle for the lead. On the bottom of your screen, you've got the battle for third position right now, being led by Michael Janney with Przemysław Lemonek, Josh Thompson and Matthew Zace in the mix. Michael Romanidis and Sebastian Weldon, the son of the late Dan Weldon, leading this race. And as they go through this beautiful, sweeping uh, second part of the snake, you just get a sense that drivers are lifting off, that they don't want to make a move into one of these hugely committal corners because they know they don't want to ruin their race. They want to have a chance of getting themselves a big result at the end of the 15 minutes and at a time. One thing that's worth noting as well, Jake, just to look a little bit further down, Harley Horton is now back in front of Diogo Pinto. So for the championship, that's really important for him because it'll mean that in both races, he's been able to oh, stay ahead of him and outscore him. But, yep, the battles are now tipping over his boiling point. Let's see how this all comes about now. <laughs> There's so many opportunities for these drivers in these final couple of laps. As around Gianni goes Lemonek. Is Thompson going to try and take advantage as well? You've got to think he's going to try something down the start finish straight. Let's see, shall we? Well, not yet, but give it a little bit of time and drive out of the hog pen. This is where you really get your chance then. It is the last lap. Barney the flagman will wave the white flag. This is it. You've got nothing left to prove tonight. Road America is in one week. Let's go three wide for third position. Josh Thompson trying to get late on the brakes. Levenek slows it up but locks it up on the front. Janney trying to thread the needle back through. Thompson's got the margin, but he can't get clearance. Levenek's not giving up on the inside. Janney has to back out of it. Levenek to the inside then in this race going on. The third position still there as they reach the left hook. And will it be like an Anthony Joshua left hook or is it a Deontay Wilder right that's coming along then from Josh Thompson? It's absolutely that. He's got oh. it done. And here comes Janney now trying to sneak away through and get himself into play. Sebastian Weldon's got four tenths of a second. He's not safe yet. Not by my markings, not by my words just yet. But now up through the second part of the snake, still side by side. They've been going for about seven or eight corners at this stage. And Pashemiswap Lemonet at the South Bend says, thank you very much. That one is mine. But up top of the screen, watch out because Sebastian Weldon's going to have to do what he did all over again. He's done this once with Josh Thompson. Oh, Brown. no. Big job as they're all getting caught up in the race for third. Who's going to scamper on through there? It's Diogo Pinto who's up to third. Incredible stuff. But now for the lead, here comes Michael Romanidis. He'll have to do it the long way around Sebastian Weldon once again if he wants to get this done. Weldon is later on the brakes, but he's locked it up. He's gone too deep. Michael Romanidis takes the lead with four corners to go and says thank you very much. This is what I waited my entire race for. I am in this without a shadow of a doubt. Third position in the championship may be attainable right now. Michael Romanidis shows Sebastian Weldon how it's done. The third position, it will be Diogo Pinto. And that is a massive hammer blow in the championship. Yeah, Harley Horton's going to come home in fifth position. Amazing stuff by Romanidis, though. He did exactly what he needed to. He just waited for the opportunity. He made Sebastian go defensive. Sebastian did a great job to keep it on the road there. But wow, oh wow, 
Diogo Pinto somehow comes through with the podium there. I was going to say that he and Harley through Oak Tree Corner were actually side by side. Diogo was around the outside and then the incident happened in front of them. Diogo managed to actually keep his foot in and just sweep around the left-hand side of it and just get away. But Horton was out on the grass on the right-hand side, nearly got involved in some contact and just about kept the car in the right direction. But Brandon Hawking nipped through and took a place. I think it all started, you know, with Thompson getting, yeah. sorry, Lemonek getting a poor run. Thompson went into the back of him. He went around, and then I think he got caught by, who was it behind him? It would have been Matthew Zace, would it not? Well, I tell a, you and what. And Janney as well. Zace and Janney, wouldn't it? We'll try and dissect that in a moment. Michael yeah. Romanidis <laughs> has picked up the win. 16 minutes, 17 seconds. Kick starts back up. His championship push. Remember, he had no drop rounds coming into today. He is now firmly in the hunt. Sebastian Weldon will take second with Diogo Pinto not only picking up an amazing result, but gaining eight places in the process. It's a three-way tie for hard charger between himself, Johannes Trout, and Jack Harrison. Brandon Hawking would finish fourth with Harley Horton in fifth position. It will then be Michael Janney in sixth. Matt Caruana will be seventh. Jemajra Vlemanek in eighth, Simone Pisoni in ninth position, and Johannes Trout rounding out the top ten, starting from dead last, uh, then going for or from 18th position going forward. Then you got Josh Thompson in 11th, car number 11. Jack Harrison started dead last, found himself up to 12th, so also a hard charger. With Matthew Zay's 13th caught up in the last lap issues, but a lot of drivers had issues today over this race. This second race particularly, a third of the field wiped away Matt Busa, Ross Banfield, Jordan Johnson, Matt Adams, Ara Leitinen, Jakub Maciejewski with a race to forget or two, and Justin Adakinis, who had the big incident up through the second half of the snake, looking to get his race sorted, but it didn't quite work out for him. Oh my word. I, I, I think that last half a lap has changed seismic, seismically uh, here, Chaz the complexity of what happened. We're going to take a look at what happened on the final lap. Josh Thompson found himself in third position. And uh, you can see top two go through. They're absolutely fine. We catch Josh Thompson here and he's going to go through this right and he just drops it. Pressure hurts and it just does funny things to people at the wrong time. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I thought it was Lemonek that was the car in front. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Josh Thompson was the one that just lost the back end. Then Lemonek got hit by Janney and then I think it was Zace went over the top of him and somehow the two championship protagonists Pinto and Horton managed to find their way around it but Pinto coming through with the third place that experience of just avoiding incidents and just getting around them without any sort of major issue that's what really played out there and again it's been all about opportunism tonight I think that's been the main topic of a lot of these races and a lot of these battles. You know, drivers just being in the right place at the right time, not necessarily the ones that go in for the big sends or try and outdo people on the brakes, but the people that are just sitting slightly off a battle and ready to pick up the pieces when it all goes to pot. It's been a big challenge for these drivers tonight, and I think it showed. Like you say, pressure does things to people. Look, this is the sort of racing where you need 95% skill here, Chaz, and 5% luck. And you look at some drivers here today, 5% luck was what was needed. We're, though, going to have the opportunity to have a little bit of a chat with some of your race-winning drivers out there. First and foremost, we'll talk with a driver in the number four machine here who's got himself on screen with this pass. And we'll look at this pass for the victory first and foremost here. Just having to get it done around the outside. New when to break. Sebastian Weldon goes in a little bit too hot. And then, thank you very much, there goes the pass. And it sorts itself out. So easy as you like michael romanidis finds himself with a way through and that is chaz the race winning move yeah fantastic move really tidy but just excellent racecraft you know he set it up all the way back at oak tree corner he got a decent enough run he knew that sebastian was going to try and defend it as hard as he could and you could see as soon as he hit that curb on the left hand corner into the roller coaster it sort of settled the car down and he thought, right, now I need to get on the brakes. I need to sit on the anchors, let him go off and do whatever he's going to do in the corner and then throw it in and just see what happens. And exactly that happened. You know, he just got exactly the right braking point. Sebastian, unfortunately, for his sake, went straight on. And then Michael took the advantage of it and he's in, in the booth with us now. He certainly is. Michael, let's talk about this. You've been 
pretty much in this since round two or round three, I should say, of the championship. You've been looking for an opportunity to really stamp your claim on P3 or higher going forward. These two races tonight for you must mean the absolute world with the way that you drove here today. Yeah, thank you, guys. Can you hear me, first of all? Well, loud and clear. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, what a couple of races. Put a, put quite a bit of prep into this relatively to the other ones. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like it paid off. Um, I think already from qualifying was probably my best qualifying of um, for this series for me, P4. So it already looked quite good from there, but uh, of course... Um, especially on this track, but uh, in any track on this series, it's quite tricky to stay out of trouble. Thankfully, with obviously a little bit of luck, uh, we did that. Um, and uh, yeah, P2 on the first race could have probably gone for a move um, into the final sheet game, but decided not to, uh, since P2 is already quite a lot of points. And then obviously I had to try something in the second race. I wasn't necessarily going for any sort of move but there was a mistake and i took the took the chance and yeah really happy to win the race talk about the style of racing here at uh, virginia international raceway michael because it looked like for a lot of the time you were trying to stay back you didn't want the lead heading towards the final couple of laps but it looked like especially in race one it was overtake or be overtaken yeah exactly um because i was trying to be a little bit cautious but if you stay stationary in like p2 or p3 you're just gonna get overtaken at some point you just have to kind of attack to defend from the drivers behind so yeah try to pick uh the right moves um every every lap was kind of having to take a different decision based on the scenario um and uh, yeah thankfully the second race was a lot easier because we managed to break draft and i knew sebastian would be very fast and we managed to carry on that momentum through the nine laps of the race and we were able to have a whatever fight we had in the in the final lap there so yeah but race one was definitely really tricky and uh, quite likely to get snatch p2 in the end let's talk road america um that's up next the final rounds tonight you have driven yourself into the race for third position overall in the championship what do you think about road america and your chances now of securing a a single race drive in the Skip Barber Racing Series for 2023? Not really thinking about it uh, too much, to be honest. Um, you know, kind of taking it race by race. I'm not actually signed up at the moment, so I don't even know if I'm going to do it. Um, I think I was at the edge of top 10 uh, coming into this uh, double double race if you want to say so i think uh, chances of getting a top three are quite slim um and uh yeah that's kind of been the story of this season after having missed the first uh, race in lime rock i didn't really know what i wanted to set myself the target for top three or just getting hard charges here and there um i managed to get one hard charger which was my target and after that i didn't really know what to do so i kind of tried to win <laughs> which uh, i guess is the main point of this all and uh now I've done that, I'll probably give Road America a go. It's uh, a track which I quite like. But um, yeah, let's see. Let's see indeed. Michael Romanidis driving himself back into position then. A victory in that second race, getting it absolutely wonderfully done. Chaz, you have managed to walk yourself down the virtual paddock and you found yourself with Mr. Sebastian Weldon. Yes, indeed. I'll tell you what, I don't do a lot of walking these days, to be honest, Jake. That's how lockdown was very painful for me. But still, Sebastian, fantastic job again, mate. Another great evening where you really showed experience beyond your age here on iRacing. And I mean, this, this circuit was very different to Lime Rock, where we started the championship. What was your experience of Virginia tonight? How did it feel from your perspective? Um, I feel good. Uh, it's just, it's kind of a bit hard to break away, especially with the long straights and, uh, Felt good. I mean, uh, we had a bit of an incident into the first race, but I, I felt like it was pretty good. And it's it's one of those circuits, isn't it? It's quite an old school track. It's very unforgiving. You know, there's no big runoff areas or concrete anywhere for you to sort of just let the car slide out a bit further wide. You know, any any tiny mistake here, you're on the grass and then, well, I mean, there's about four miles before any barriers. But to be honest, it's just such a painful place when it goes wrong, isn't it? Yeah, so 
especially uh, heading into uh, NASCAR Bend, it's it's a bit loose there, especially if you get on the curb too much, especially with the tarmac on exit. And overall, the track's just a bit hard to uh, a bit hard to uh, stay on track. Well, one circuit that's not too difficult to stay on track, but it's definitely going to be a lot of mind games, is Road America next week. There's a lot of slipstreaming opportunities there. Do you think it's going to be a really fun race to do, though? Because, I mean, it's probably the one I'm most excited for, to be honest with you. That'll be fun. Um, just, uh, like you said, the draft is going to be a big part. Qualifying, uh, being at the right place where you need to be at the right time, all that. Well, it should be fantastic fun to watch, Sebastian. Well done again from everybody here. It was another fantastic night for you, and we'll see you at Road America. Thank you. Lovely stuff. And, Jake, it is time to take it away once more with Diogo Pinto. He's a regular in our commentary box now. He he, he really is. Uh, Diogo, um, after race one, you found yourself down the order in about P11. You find yourself with half a lap to go down in P8. And then suddenly the seas part, a miracle happens for you, and you've got a podium. Yeah, it was a silly, very silly mistake by myself in, in race one. Maybe I had a, a win in the bag there and just locked up and went straight. So I rarely, rarely do these type of mistakes, but they happened. Um, thankfully, on the second race, I was really lucky on the last lap. A little bit of some nice reflex, reflexes as well, going on the left. But uh, yeah, I guess the championship is still quite close. Luckily, like I said, it is P3 for me, but we'll see into the last round. We will see indeed. Let, let's talk you versus Harley Horton then, because both of you didn't have the ideal uh, week here at Virginia International Raceway. Uh, it's still even keel there or thereabouts heading to Road America, which might have a lot more of this style of racing overtake or be overtaken. How do you go about preparing for a track where overtaking is about as common as breathing. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. You just have to be smart and patient sometimes and aggressive. In, in my case, I had to start from the back. Um, but yeah, like, it will be exactly like this race. Uh, me and Ali were, we were together pretty much for the entire race. We had, we were fighting for a couple of laps. We even, we even had a little bit of contact, but thankfully we both managed to carry on without any damage or positions lost. So could be an entertaining final two races. It certainly could be an entertaining final two races. Just one final quick question then, Diogo, before we uh, send ourselves uh, off towards Road America. Uh, for you, in terms of how you've constructed this season and your development as a sim racing driver, um, how important is it for you to have something like this available as an option for you as a different way to get into racing that's maybe not the traditional tried and tested method but more rather giving you know sim racers like you an opportunity and a platform to develop well i've always done real life racing in karting i won the portuguese national championships in karting when i was younger but uh, as, as it is the case with a lot of drivers I, I couldn't carry on due to financial reasons the reasons so sim racing was a nice way for me to keep racing and now i have, I have this opportunity my goal was to get the top two and get hopefully do some races in real life. That would be fantastic for me. Well, we hope that happens for you and we hope that you have that really good opportunity come your way. Diogo Pinto there joining us third place in that second race overall. But one week from today, if this was anything to go by, then this track is going to be massive. March 2nd, 8 p.m. Eastern. It all finishes here at Road America. One champion has to be decided and get a full seat season worth the equivalent of half a million US dollars. This is where it is going to be secured. And you're going to be here with us with iRacing one week from today to make sure that happens. Mark my words, it is going to be absolutely incredible. But that's going to bring ourselves then to a close then this evening here from the Virginia International Raceway, from the entire team that has got it done. And of course, from the person alongside me, Chaz Draycott. I've been Jake Sperry. It has been a day to remember for Sebastian Weldon and Michael Romanidis. A victory for both of them puts them back in the mix for third. But Diogo Pinto's found a miracle in that second race. It's still open. It's still anybody's up at the top. But my word, it's Road America where the story comes to a head. Join us in a week's time. That's where it all continues. <laughs>